do you want a better way to invite patients to come to appointments using System 1? A short while back, System 1 released their COVID vaccination support tool to help patients come for appointments and vaccination schedules. But actually, there's real adaptations you can make with that method to try and make it easier to invite patients for various other things as well. But it'd be nice to have a proper guide. Well, in this episode, I'm joined by Dr. Edward Turnham from Norfolk and Waverley CCG. In fact, he's actually going to be taking us through it completely himself to show you how you can adapt the new System 1 invitation system to make it work for your practice for things like phlebotomy and various other parts to really streamline access to your appointment book with your patients. It's a really cool episode, nice little guide coming for you. Hopefully you find it useful. Let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. Hello. My name's Ed Turnham, I'm a GP and I'm the Clinical Lead for Digital Strategy at Norfolk and Waverley CCG. Today I'd like to show you how I'm using patient appointment invitations in System 1. These are a very powerful tool that's so far been released mostly for the purpose of the COVID vaccination programme. They allow you to send bulk patient appointment invitations by text message or email. Each patient gets a unique um, invitation link um, so that when they book in uh, the, the system knows who the patient is, it authenticates them using their date of birth and that goes straight into the appointment book. Uh, so you can imagine this can save a huge amount of time for things such as booking uh, blood tests. We're already started to use it in my practice um, on a small scale for booking blood tests and I hope to be using that on a large scale in a, um, in a sort of automated recall system in the near future. One thing I'm also doing is using it to allow patients to book face-to-face -face appointments with me. So we're using an online triage system. So mostly I'm getting an online request from the patient. If it looks like I'm probably gonna to need to see them face-to-face, -face, I simply send them a link which allows them to book that face-to-face -face at a time that suits them. And I'm getting very good feedback from patients for that. It's more convenient for them and it's very quick for me. It only takes a minute or so for me to look at that form decide I want to see them face to face and send that link. So let me show you how you can do this in system one as an administrator. So there is a TPP uh, document which partially explains how to do this. So you need to go to help, support and FAQs, documents and training guides. It is quite well hidden and it is under the bulk register and appointment booking website. It's given me an error because I've already got that open. Here's part of the document here. This is a bit on setting up appointment invitation types and it takes you through most of the process. But I found actually there were some hurdles which aren't explained in that document. So I'm going to just go through how it worked for me. The first thing to know is that to, to configure and set up patient appointment invitation types, you need to do that at an organisation group level. Uh, rather than just at a practice level. You, you're probably already a member of some organisation groups, maybe there's a CCG group. Um, if you use Ardens and all that content is shared through an organisation group. So what I had to do is actually set up a sort of dummy organisation group, which is simply for my own practice. So set up user and policy organisation groups. What I did is uh, took the local CCG as the sort of mother group and I set up an organization group which is purely my own practice under that. I've made it so that membership must be approved so no other organizations will just come and join by mistake and cause, prob um, and cause problems for themselves. As I said, I set this up purely to allow us to configure lists. So once you've done that, go again to set up users and policy, configured lists, you need to make the changes at organisation group level. So don't pick your current organisation, go to organisation groups and go into that group that you've set up. Go into appointments, it should be under here, but it's not, here's another hurdle. You need to unclick this button, that text box at the top. Let's go back into it. Appointment invitation type, there it is now. It's almost like they don't want you to find it. So now what we can do is we can set up new options. So I've set up a new option at the organization group level. We're still not done. So I need to go to my current organization 
and put that option into the list of allowed options. So we've already got these permitted options here. The, the two COVID vaccination ones are set up automatically by TPP. These are ones I've already added blood tests and face to face with me. This is the one I've just added now. So you need to now configure this list. So you can either right click here and configure list or you can click up here, configure list. You need to move this blood pressure one here into the list of uh, uh, permitted options. Now we're done with that bit. So you've got that list of options set up. Now the next step is to match that um, to a rotor type. So again, go into organization preferences here. It's under appointments, go to patient appointment invitation. At the bottom here, we've got these different appointment invitation types and you can match those to different rotor types. So you can see the blood test one here is um, that's purely permitted for the HCA clinic rotor type. So I've had to tidy up our rotors so that all the HCAs um, have clinics that are of that type. You can also have you can have more than one rotor type matched to a um, to appointment invitation type. So we set up that new blood pressure one. We'd have to match that to a, a rotor type two. And at the top here, you can configure what slots can be used for patient appointment invitations. Now, the drawback here at the moment with the way it's set up is that while you can configure which slots are permissible, these apply to all patient appointment invitation types. So, for instance, if I were to have um, if I were to want to have one patient appointment invitation type, which is face to face with Dr. Turnham and another which is phone appointment with Dr. Turnham. If I were to have those both in the same rotor type, that wouldn't work very well because anyone I sent the face to face invitation to would also be able to see the phone, um, the phone appointment slots and vice versa, which would obviously be quite confusing for the patient. So that is quite limiting. It does mean you have to think quite cleverly about how you're going to use the system. There's no ability innately to filter according to staff member, which is why I've had to hack the system here by creating my own session type, which is purely for my own sessions. That can make it a bit complicated for the admin staff when it comes to um, creating the rotors, although to be honest, it's not that hard. So let's say we've done that. So I'm in my patient's record. If I want to send an individual appointment invitation, um, I've set up a, uh, a link here. So what you need to do is um, configure the toolbar, ideally do this at organisation level. You're looking for patient, patient appointment invitation, send a patient appointment invitation, there it is. Just move that onto the right hand side there. It's there already. You click on that. You choose the invitation type we want. So let's say I want to allow the patient to book in for face to face with me. SMS or email, so either works. I tend to use SMS. That adds the URL, but you need to add some accompanying text. Otherwise, they're not going to know what's going on. So I've got a preset set up for that. Obviously, you can set up various presets at user or organization level. And that will go when you save the record. So here's a video I made earlier, which is what that looks like from the patient perspective. So they receive that text message on their phone. They click the link. They need to fill out their date of birth so they can type it or do it the long window way through that calendar that's popped up. Unfortunately, the calendar obscures the submit button. You can see at the top, you can filter by period. Automatically, they're only shown the first two weeks, which is a bit of a stumbling block potentially, but they can um, click that drop down and see a wider range of dates. You can also filter by branch. You can see all the sessions there, which have available slots. They go into a session and they can book an appointment. That will go straight into the, into the rotor. Unfortunately, the slot, uh, the appointment comes through with no accompanying text, so there's nothing there saying bloods 
or mole so you you have to sort of guess what they've come about or well go into the journal to see what's going on but nevertheless i do find that's working uh, well for me patients like it um, it's saving quite a bit of time for me i think it'll save a lot of time for our admin staff in terms of booking appointments while making sure that appointments only go to uh, patients who actually need them and patients get the right kind of appointment. So EGP learners, I hope you found that useful. I know I have, and there's real quality information there to help you manage your appointment system a lot more effectively using some of the new tools that are available. If you do have any comments or questions, pop them down below. Really appreciate if you could do that. Alternately, if you are seeing this before the event happens, you're welcome to join us on the 30th of June, where we'll be running our System One Facebook Users Group online conference in combination with System One. I'm sure we're going to have additional information on this, as well as other aspects that you'll be able to ask at that particular event. If you are interested, I'll pop the links down below so you can have a look at that. And as always, EGP Learning is here to help save you and your patients time by taking out your primary care and learning. Catch you in the next episode.